The end result is what you see here. These slides here and here, you're kind of looking through holes in the top two slides of capillaries, pipes, cut in half. It's like kind of looking down, down the center of a garden hose like this. And you see the white areas in the top two slides, that those are the open pipe sections of these capillaries. They're wide open and, wide and nice and clear. This is normal, this is healthy. This means red blood cells can actually bend down and squeeze through those, go drop off oxygen to tissue, and, and then uh, spin back around through the, the venous side of the blood supply, come back to the lungs, drop off carbon dioxide, and go through the cycle again. But the openness, we call this the patency, or, or the degree of openness of these white spots, and these white areas in these uh, electron microscope uh, images of these capillary networks, the A and B slide is normal. The bottom slide, uh, slides, slide C and D, are not normal. And much like the slides we showed earlier from congenital rubella children, we see that the inside lining of the blood vessels in the C and D slides have increased in size. So the endothelium has increased in size. And they have actually closed off the central uh, opening tube of this pipe, so now you get nothing through those pipes. This is in response to uh, a stimulus associated with inflammation that causes this response. When that happens, anything distal, any tissue distal from that blockage will not get any oxygen at all. That's a problem. We call that strokes. Again, one more time with the slide with the young boy who died uh, after being uh, here, again again from congenital rubella, corner of the mouth down, the eyes turned a bit. You see the, the strokes here, right hip up here to the brain, uh, where the four red arrows are. You can see these areas were each hit with uh, lack of oxygen. These are strokes. We can see this in the brain because the person died. We do not see this, some of this stuff with our contemporary imaging, with MRIs or CT scans. We just don't see it. It's just not that clinically apparent to us on our images. So here we go on, a, on, a, on an idea. You have, it's important to understand how blood flow works going to the brain. The heart pumps each beat. And with each beat, it's the, the, keep in mind that the, the pulse pressure, or the blood pressure you have into your brain or through your blood vessels goes up and goes down. And uh, it's not a continuous flow forward. You have pressure going up and you have pressure going down. And here, we're going to go through the pressure wave as each heartbeat works and go to go up into the uh, actual brain. And we have the circle of Willis the main part of the circle where the main arteries go out to the brain to give oxygen and tissue delivery. You have the carotid arteries coming up through the neck and you have the vertebral arteries which are buried back further here which come up and give uh, off to an artery called the basilar artery which gives off blood vessels to all of the lower, the posterior part of the brain. These areas are critical to creating some of the neurological features we'll show you here shortly. So here we have the entire sequence of one heartbeat in which the blood's going to go up through the carotid arteries, vertebral arteries, to the circle of Willis, go out to the brain, and, uh, and then there's a back pressure and it goes through the cycle again. So the brain gets oxygen in, in series of pulse waves, foof, foof, like, foof, like this repetitively with each heartbeat, up, down, up, down. Now, uh, if you follow the top slides here, you will see that the, uh, you'll follow the wave of blood as it comes up through the carotid arteries, goes circle of Willis, gets up high, and you see the brain becomes redder and redder. It's getting more perfused, and then the pressure doesn't go again. The key thing here, and this is important to the adverse events as well as sudden death, is to recognize that the brain responds to changes in the, it's, it's, it, the brain responds to its needs based on pulse waves. The brain's big blood vessels and smaller, some smaller blood vessels down the arterioles, they respond to pressure in the inside blood vessel walls. So if the pressure drops, uh, you've got a drop in blood pressure, the brain senses this by the lack of pressure being pushed on these inside blood vessel walls in the brain, and it sends signals down the heart to speed up the heartbeat. It sends signals off to the, to the lungs to increase respiration rate, and the brain knows to do these things based on these pressure receptors. The key thing is, is that in the brain, there are no flow receptors. 
meaning if you have adequate pressure but you have no forward blood flow the brain will not signal the body that something's wrong because uh, the brain will assume that it's got good pressure so consider this scenario that when you have the actual small pipes being blocked off downstream uh, in the small capillary levels and then blood cannot go through there each time the heart beats it creates a pressure wave that comes up here and bang hits it like a, a, a water hammer and there's no forward flow through these areas no forward blood flow your your vital signs remain the same there's no increase in heart rate there's no increase in, increase in rest pressure, uh, respiration rate, there's no change in blood pressure. Uh, but because the brain, with each beat against this closed sort of like pathway, the pressure on the inside of the blood vessel walls here, the brain thinks it's got normal pressure. So nothing changes and the doctors are blind. You can have a person dying, uh, blowing out their brain in an, in, in a, in an intensive care unit and the doctors will not know. They'll, they'll be scratching their head, why is this happening? Normal vital signs? Uh, I don't understand what's going on. All of the metabolics and our blood work is all normal. This doesn't make sense. But here you go. When you cannot get through these small blood vessels, and these small blood vessels are serving critical areas in the brain, for example, the control of respiration centers in the base of the brain, a uh, person will die. They'll stop. They'll have. They'll stop breathing. And in infants, we call it sudden infant death. Uh, in young children we call it sudden death, in adults we call it sudden death, in schizophrenia patients who are walking across streets and, and just stop breathing, we call it sudden death. But no one knows uh, the answer as to why. And the reason is the brain determines its needs based on pressure receptors, not flow receptors. And the problem with, res with the adverse response to coagulation and clotting and blood sludging and zeta potential, which we will get to, is a problem with blocking off these small blood vessels and forward flow through some uh, many areas of tissue. No forward flow, no oxygen, the brain will end up having uh, strokes and other organs will have problems as well. But the pressure waves go up and down, it's critical.